I'm Craig Wilson, museum historian for Mackinac State Historic Parks. I'm here at Colonial Mission Mackinac in Mackinac City. And as you can see, I've got my snowshoes on. Now, snowshoeing is something that I do for fun here in northern Michigan in the wintertime. I've got my nice modern snowshoes made out of aluminum and plastic and other modern materials. But 250 years ago, snowshoes were an important piece of life here at Michigan Mackinac, and it really allowed this community to survive throughout the wintertime. Let's take a closer look at this technology and the role it played in the lives of the people who lived here in the Straits of Mackinac. Well, now I'm a bit more appropriately dressed as one of the original French-Canadian residents of Michelin Mackinac back in the 18th century. I've been outfitted with a pair of snowshoes. Now these may look a little bit different from those modern ones that I was wearing just a couple of minutes ago, because these are much closer to what the original residents here at the Straits of Mackinac would have been using. Now like many of the different things that the French Canadians wore and used in the fur trade, these snowshoes were originally a Native American invention. Now I'll know that although there was a lot of variation based on tribal groups and geographic location in terms of how snowshoes were designed, they'll work on the same basic principle. You can see how large these are. They spread out your weight on top of the snow so you don't just sink right down into it. They're made of a wooden frame. Uh, the native men would be responsible for collecting that wood, steaming it to create this shape, and then the women would actually be responsible for doing all of the lacing, that lattice work that actually supports your feet. Historically, this would have been made out of the, the leather from an elk or a deer. Now when the French first uh, came to North America and started exploring Canada, they noted that the native people used these snowshoes as a very important wintertime tool. And as with many other things, they realized that uh, they were critical for mobility uh, in the snow, and so they began to copy them. As early as 1603, Samuel de Champlain described snowshoes to people back in France. He actually compared them to tennis rackets. That's where they received their French name, raquette, spelled with a Q. After uh, Champlain's description, many other explorers, Jesuit missionaries, wrote about uh, the, uh, the great advantages afforded to the native people as well as the Frenchmen by these snowshoes. It allowed the French to penetrate here into uh, the upper Great Lakes to come to places like Michelin-Mackinac and to uh, survive throughout the wintertime. Snowshoes were considered a part of French-Canadian culture as much as they were a part of native culture. Alexander Henry, who was one of the fur traders here in the early 1760s, wrote about traveling regularly on snowshoes between here at Michelin-Mackinac and Sault Ste. Marie, about 60 miles away. He wrote that uh, although they, the snowshoes did allow the men to move, uh, they could also be rather painful. He described something called the mal de raquette, or the snowshoe sickness. Although these do help you move over the snow, they can be difficult to walk in. They do put a lot of strain on your muscles, and uh, Henry was not shy about complaining about how that made him feel. These were again such a part of the culture here in the Upper Great Lakes that just a few years later, Captain Arndt de Peister, the British commander of Michelin Mackinac, actually went out of his way to collect some snowshoes from the local native people. Uh, and he took them back home with him to Scotland when he ultimately retired. That pair of snowshoes collected by de Peister here at the Straits is now on display in the Museum of Liverpool. And we here at Mackinac State Historic Parks also have uh, several examples of original snowshoes as part of our museum collections. visit us in the summertime here at Colonial Michelin Mackinac. We may not be dressed as warmly, we may not be talking as much about snowshoes, but you'll still have a great opportunity to learn about the French, the Native Americans, the British, and how they came together and worked here at the Straits of Mackinac.